All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free chica, chica. Learning. So in this video, we're going to look at engineering dynamics again and using a normal and tangential coordinate system and figuring out some normal and tangential components from a given set of velocity and acceleration vectors associated with a particle. And in this case, we've got this bird, like a super bird. At the instant shown, this bird, Jay Siegel, has a speed of 150 meters per second. And the direction of the velocity vector is at an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal and the acceleration vector is towards the right of 20 meters per second squared and what we want to find is the rate of increase in the bird speed and the radius of curvature of the path the way that we're going to solve this problem our approach is as follows first thing we want to do is make sure that we draw a schematic of the given problem statement of the particle in this case and make sure that we understand the given vectors in this case velocity and acceleration that are given to us and when I say understand the vectors we have to know the direction and the magnitude next we're gonna draw the coordinate system that we're gonna use or at least the positive directions of the coordinate system that we are gonna use to solve this problem and then we're going to use some basic vector geometry or algebra and determine the components of these velocity and acceleration vectors in the coordinate system that we want to know them in. And last but not least, we're going to solve. And solving just really means using up the definitions of these components according to that respective coordinate system. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But that usually typically involves some geometry calculations or, and the definitions. So in this problem, I've already got my schematic kind of drawn out for us already. And my velocity vector would be this 150 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal. My acceleration vector is has a magnitude of 20 meters per second squared in the horizontal direction towards the right. And now what I want to do is draw that coordinate system. The question is like, why do I have to use an NT coordinate system here to solve this problem? Well, the question asks for the rate of increase, which is technically dv dt on the path, and then the radius of curvature, which is rho. And if you recall the definition of the acceleration and velocity in the NT components, you might recall that the velocity vector was this the magnitude or the speed et, which is the unit vector in the tangential direction. And then the acceleration vector would be the normal component, I'll put this en hat for the unit vector in the normal, plus at, et hat, which is the unit vector in the tangential. And the definition of an was v, or the speed squared, divided by rho. That dv dt was the rate of increase in the velocity. And so that tells us right away, oh, we got to be using nt components because my problem's asking for the exact things that are embedded, especially in the acceleration vectors here. Now, the velocity vector is important when we draw the coordinate system because in the NT components, the tangential direction is parallel to the velocity or it's tangent to the path. So our tangential direction will just be, bam, call this plus T. And then my normal direction will be towards the center of curvature, which in this case is 90 degrees from that tangential component and going this way. And now I want to find the normal and tangential components of the acceleration vector, which looks like this. The normal component would be towards the center of curvature in this case. And here, this acceleration vector, the tangential component would be here. And because we know that this angle is 60, we also know that this angle is 30 degrees. Now I can calculate the magnitudes of these components. And knowing what I know about the magnitude of the acceleration vector, which is 20 meters per second squared, I know that the normal component is equal to A cosine of 30 degrees. And this would tell me that I have 17.32 meters per second squared in the normal direction. And my tangential component, AT, is equal to A sine of 30. That is just 10 meters per second squared. Now I just have to solve for the rate of change and the radius of curvature using the definitions of these normal components. 
or I know based on the definition of my normal component, the normal component is V squared, the speed squared divided by the radius of curvature. And we found that the magnitude of this is 17.32 meters per second squared. You can just go ahead and solve for rho. And I would get rho is equal to 1,299.1 meters. And using the tangential definition, which is dv dt, that already is just straight up 10 meters per second squared. So J, Jonathan Siegel, is increasing his speed at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. The radius of curvature at that instant is 1,299.1 meters. All right. Hopefully that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. There is no substitute for practice see ya stretch free